Hey, welcome back everyone to another great episode of Cellos Flipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and in today's episode, we are replacing the engine on a 2004 Ford Explorer V6 engine. So, stay tuned, guys. Yeah! another great episode of Sell Those Flipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and as I said, we're replacing the engine in the, the, we are replacing the engine in the 2004 Ford Explorer. So this model does have the V6 engine in it, which is fine. It's a very strong engine, but a uh, customer was driving the vehicle and uh, they heard a pop, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Now, unlike when you have a head gasket pop, okay, uh, your oil is still good on this. Uh, it cranks and it cranks fast too, but it doesn't do anything, it just cranks. It is receiving fuel, it is receiving spark, but it's not receiving fuel and spark at the right time when it's supposed to be. So. This is a great indication that the timing chain has jump track or broken. So we have the new timing chain kit in and we're going to replace it. But unlike uh, other vehicles, the Ford Explorer is not a quick replacement. You got to pull the engine. I'm looking forward to an engine swap. You are? Are you? Let's do it. Let's get started. Come on, let's jump in. We'll get this done, guys. Follow me. All right, so here we are in front of the engine, of course, and we are getting ready to uh, replace the timing chain. So we have to pull the engine out. So we're gonna go ahead and lose this hood, disconnect the, uh, negative side of the battery undo that disconnect the sensors on the air intake right there and that's the only one you got a hose right here see it Ooh, it doesn't like uh, zooming out too much all right so, go ahead and uh, remove that, and then we'll move on to the next step. Next, we need to remove the cruise control cable and the accelerator cable. Remove those, and remove the battery and the battery tray. So, we'll go ahead and knock that out. As you see, most of these bolts are eight millimeter. So if you put your eight millimeter on a drill, you can get this thing disassembled rather quickly. I would have to say this is the part of the disassembly that I hate the most. And that is disconnecting all of the wire harness that is connected to the engine and the vacuum lines that are connecting to the engine as well you need to make sure you take note of where each sensor is so you put it back in the same place now the great thing about a wire harness though is it's a certain length and with it being a certain length it only reaches so far so you don't really have to worry about it too much, but on the vacuum lines, those need to be noted. Uh, vacuum lines, heater hose lines, anything like that. If you remove one, make sure that you're taking note where you removed it from and where is it going to. A great way to do this is using a paint marker. Uh, you guys see me with my, my paint marker uh, all the time. 
but uh, I cannot find it at the moment to put it in front of the camera like this and say, look, I'm using a paint marker. Uh, but I'm going to use my paint marker, guys, so take my word for it. All right, so that is our job on this one is removing the electrical connectors and the vacuum lines uh, holding this engine back. So uh, look uh, along your, your firewall. You got them back here for your, your ETR. You got un unhook that, which let's go and unhook that right now. I'm here, might as well. All right, you got one right here. You see all these though? This has a certain length and it's just gonna lay right here when you go to put it back on. And you'll know all that goes to your throttle body. Too easy, all right? There we go. And yes, I just used the video as my own uh, note of where the connectors and the heater hoses and vacuum lines are going. So thank you for being my guinea pigs. <laughs> Hi guys, let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, the shroud is out. Uh, now I'm getting the radiator out. Uh, you need to vacuum out your AC lines because those will have to come off. Uh, so, focus on getting this radiator out. The cooling fan uh, shrouds, draining the cooling system, removing the uh, radiator hoses, and take out this radiator. So, guys, if this video is helping you so far, make sure you hit the like button in the lower right-hand corner. That not only tells uh, YouTube I'm doing a good job, but it also tells me I'm doing a good job. You know, uh, and it helps me want to make more videos for you guys to help you out. Um, also, you know, if you want to support the channel, that would always be nice. Guys and gals by subscribing to the channel and uh, checking out all the weekly auto DIY videos I do. I post uh, two, usually three times a week. And uh, you know, I do this to help you guys out. Save you that headache. So, all right, cooling system. Let's go ahead and take care of that and we'll be back for the next step. All right. Next, we're needing to take the battery box out, the serpentine belt, and ah, the main power at your relay, okay? It's going to sit just like this, okay? You're needing to take this nut off. It's a 10 millimeter. Just go ahead. Take the main power source out of the relay box, which is just as simple as doing this. Oh no! <laughs> the main power is off. Okay, so what we need, I'm gonna go ahead and put this nut back on there because I do not feel like hunting for hardware when I go to put this thing back together, as he said. I not as you said, as you said, no, as I said, this has to be done by Sunday for a uh, delivery. So uh, it's more just concentrating on it, focusing on what we need to get done and doing it step by step, one step at a time, guys. I mean, I'm just as bad as anyone else on making a vehicle uh, freak me out, you know, and make me anxious. But think about it like I do, and it's just one step at a time. Before you know it, all of this is replaced. And you feel so much better about your production level. So, all right, let's go on to the next step, guys. And uh, we'll get this thing cranking. All right, now we're really rolling. Uh, what you want to do is take off the upper radiator hose uh, you want to drain the cooling system first, but it's going to come out either way. Uh, there's still going to be some there. 
So don't make too big of a mess, but if it makes a mess, it's okay. I went ahead and took the spark plug wires off because they start getting in the way of getting the other bolts out. So just go ahead and take those out. I do have my little helper today, Xavian, and my beautiful wife is helping. So we're going to go ahead and knock these out. <clears throat> Power steering uh, reservoir does need to come off. It's held on by uh, two 10 millimeter bolts and a eight millimeter on the side. So you'll have to get that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this intake manifold off so we can uh, see the fuel rails and go ahead and detach those. So uh, the job you have now is go ahead and take the shroud on the upper uh, radiator off, drain your cooling system, take your upper radiator hose off, and uh, start taking this intake manifold off, okay? Do that and we'll be right back, guys. It's now time to get the vehicle put on jack stands. Make sure you give it a good shake so you know you're secure before you go under. We need to drain the engine oil so yes the coolant made a little mess but that's okay so drain the engine oil we'll move on to the next step you see with every step we're one step closer to getting this thing gone all right, so I got the condenser out, that's gone. Now I gotta deal with the radiator and the transmission cooler that wants to be right down there, which the two lines for it right below, there we go. You see those two right there? They're giving me a little bit of a hard time, but I'll get those off and then the radiator and the condenser will come off. I'll let you know how I get the two little bands off, of course. And uh, I went ahead and took the front two wheels off and give us a little bit more space, especially when we go to pull the engine. You got to have enough room to crane up, but worst case scenario, you can always lower the car down. Um, there we go. All right, taking care of that, and uh, we'll be right back, guys. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, got the radiator, condenser, and uh, transmission cooler out. Put it right over there. All good to go. Now we have the EGR pipe and the fuel lines, if you didn't get those, which... I did not and uh, EGR pipe you got right here remember remember with your EGR valve I took the throttle body off to show you guys this but I have no light hold on there you go if you look in there your EGR valve has a little neck that goes in there and hooks. So don't just yank it out. Keep lowering the light. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so watch it when you pull it out, guys. Hey guys, don't forget the ground strap that is right there on the engine. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. And you yeah, yeah, it's right there in a terrible spot, guys. <laughs> uh, it would be easier if Zayvan would give me my ladder back. So, right. Can I get my ladder back? There, know. pretty much. Like take this ground strap, guys. Follow it down. And that will be right there. Let me go get a real ratchet. Hey. Get that. Uh, now we're moving on to the transmission. Uh, we gotta disconnect the connectors that are on it and the shift lever uh, not lever but the cable itself you need to disconnect that hey! alright the compressor is now out as you see I went ahead and moved the AC lines over to the side 
Uh, that way they're out of the way. Uh, now, oh, also, I went ahead and disconnected the EGR. Okay, I disconnected it right here at the throttle body. So that is taken care of there. No, get down. Jeez. So Xavier's helping, helping me get a heart attack. But, uh, yeah. Alright, so the EGR is disconnected. We're gonna go underneath. And we have to disconnect the transmission and O2 sensors. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll bring you guys under there. All right, here we are under the driver's side looking at the transmission with the cross member being right here. You got your transmission pan and on the right side you have your shift cable. It's also held in by that support bracket right there. See that one? Hold on. Let's see. Let's see if I can focus a little bit better. There you go, guys. Support bracket needs to come out. Uh, that'll just make it easier for you. And that shift cable needs to come off right there. It's held in by that plastic clip. So pull the plastic clip get the lever off you're good to go on that side spot already you might as well pull off the uh hold on i'm trying to get some light guys my apologies all right you might as well pull off the exhaust pipe uh loosen that off of the header so the uh exhaust manifold you will need to pull that next let me see I'd hate to say this, but man, this looks blurry to me. Here I'm like, should I go get my glasses? Should I, should I go get them? No, mm -hmm. no. Nah, nah. All right. All right. So pull the exhaust. Make sure you unplug the O2 sensors. You'll be good there. Of course, Xavier thinks I'm a bench, and he sat on my legs. All right. Uh, the driver's side exhaust is a little bit uh, in a better spot. So, if you can pull that as well, you'll be good on the driver's side. All right, it is time to take your starter out. Here it is right here. You need a 15 millimeter for the mounting bolts, a 13 millimeter for the power, and a 10 millimeter for the ground. Go ahead and get that taken out. All right, guys, here we are under the uh, truck. We need a three quarters, uh, three quarters deep well, uh, socket with a extension give me this you're gonna have your crank bolt up here you need to turn that so you can get the uh, torque converter bolts out the uh, crank is a three quarters the bolts for your torque converter are 15 millimeter Okay, you take them out where you take the starter out. When you get that done, then your uh, your transmission or your torque converter is unhooked from the engine and we're a, that much closer, just that much closer to having this thing done, which is amazing. Guys, remember uh, you the first nut you take out of that bell housing uh, off of that torque converter, you want to mark it with a paint marker so you know where it has to go back in at. You don't want to, you know, just guess or anything, okay? So get that, and then I got to get one more nut off that exhaust right there so I can uh, disconnect them from the headers or the exhaust manifold. But go ahead and get the uh, torque converter bolts, and then we'll move on to the next step, guys. All right, guys, we're to the part of the disassembly where we need to get the engine crane in place. 
So we'll go ahead and move that in place. We took the uh, torque converter bolts out. We still need to take the transmission out, okay? You're going to part it, which means that the back drive shaft has to come off. Okay, uh, that's only four bolts anyways, and then you should be able to just move it out. I'll show you guys when I, I go ahead and knock it out. Um, let's go ahead and move the engine hoist in place and deal with the transmission. We gotta take that out, and then we are so close. We're actually within, I'd say five more steps, and we will have this engine out. So, let's get to it, guys. All right, guys, I went ahead and took off all the front accessories and the intake manifold, make it easier to pull out. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the mounting bolts ready on the side. And the other side, I'll be hooking up here and over there. Okay. Uh, everything else is unhooked. Uh, I'm going to pull the motor mounts on the side. Uh, one second, guys. Let me find that light. I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, is a nice option to use. Uh, it also is going to save you a lot of time, guys, uh, when taking it apart, putting it back together. So, of course, both my lights are uh, down there. So, uh, I do have two, uh, two more lights on order So, uh, for my video rig itself. So, be prepared for some better lighting really soon. All right. Uh, on the, the motor mount down there... Let's see if we can see from the side. Um, no. No, you can't see from the side either. That's awesome. Okay, guys. So down on each side, you'll have your two motor mounts. They're 18 millimeter uh, nuts. <laughs> if you go ahead and take the 13 millimeter uh, bolts out on the side after you lift it up some then it'll be a lot easier and you can leave the transmission in all right guys so right here you have your motor mount you guys see it two 18 millimeter uh, nuts you got to take those off but uh, in most cases you have to take the transmission off because you're going to lift up and forward and all that noise take the torque converter bolts off leave the transmission alone take the three 13 millimeter bolts that are right here by the motor mounts after you lift up the engine a little by doing that, uh, also you gotta lift the transmission just a little to relieve the pressure on the torque converter. But by doing that, you'll be able to take that motor mount out right here and uh, you won't have to, you know, come forward or anything. You'll, you can just start working the motor out from where it's sitting right now. So if you want to take that option, that is the option I'm going with. Um, or you can go with the classic option of, you know, removing the transmission. There's more, more than one way to skin a cat, guys. So uh, this is the way I'm going with. And uh, we're almost there, guys. Uh, almost there. So I can get this timing chain done and throw this thing back in. So here we go, guys. All right, I went ahead and put rags uh, in the ports where the intake manifold was, so we don't have to worry about that. There we go, move that out of the way. I took the motor mounts out down there. 
one second, guys. Barely see it, but nuts are gone. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, get the last couple bell housing bolts on top. Let me see if I can get you guys in there. Right in there, there's the last two bell housing bolts. I'm gonna grab those. And then this engine will be ready to get hooked up and uh, taken out. So here we go. last transmission bolts are uh, B. <laughs> so there we have it guys. The 2004 Ford Explorer engine removal is, uh, is now complete. Now, I have to do the timing chain on this nice V6 4.0 liter and um, go ahead and get that taken care of and then I'll, I'll be putting the engine back in. So, hopefully you guys liked the video. Hopefully uh, it was, it was a, a guide uh, to you to get your engine removal complete. Uh, guys, just repeat the steps and revert in reverse to uh, reinstall the engine. If you like this video and this video was beneficial toward, uh, to you, make sure you smash that like button. It tells YouTube and myself that I'm doing a good job and it's helping you guys out. So thank you so much for the support of the channel. Also, if you're looking for more auto DIY videos, then this is the channel for you. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and I look forward to having you as a subscriber. If you do have any questions, please put them in the uh, put them in the comments section down below. Also, uh, thank you so much guys for actually watching the, the videos. Uh, I really enjoy making them for you guys and I love the uh, responses I give back that they're, they're helpful to you. So if you haven't checked out any of my other videos, uh, definitely check out the, uh, the ending credits and one uh, will be thrown up there for you. Hopefully you like it. So thank you so much, guys. Until next time, keep on wrenching, guys. Take care.